Well, I got my amateur radio license when I was 13. Edmond, Oklahoma is calling to see you. And that became a big area of my life, which I still do today. Everett Cox was a Methodist man affected by a tragedy. He felt a devastating grief month after month after month. I was born in Anadarko, Oklahoma, which is about 65 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. In 1940, we moved to Oklahoma City, and Dad was with the Liberty National Bank, specializing in mortgages. And in fact, in, in 45, he formed his own company called Oklahoma Mortgage Company, Inc. And I knew I would be joining him at some point. We had a, a small house, as it seems, but everybody seemed to live in smaller houses back then. I grew up here, I went to Taft Junior High and then the old class in high school. One of my good friends I met in the second grade, Lynn Myers, ultimately became a pathologist. I wound up going to Oklahoma University and majoring in finance. Graduating from OU, they were drafting because it was the Cold War. Diesel engines fuller up this 28 degree grade with no track ground. I went through Navy officer candidate school, became a Naval officer, and then they had openings in Navy Air. It was time for orders. I requested Guam Island. We did a lot of skin diving. Water was 82 degrees year round. When I got out of the Navy, I'd gone through all the Navy schools, air ground officer school and maintenance school. I started flying at about uh, 61 and uh, ultimately uh, got my commercial pilot's license, ultimately developed 5,000 hours as the years went by. I even had ham radio aboard my airplanes, but we'd use the aircraft to fly in the Bahamas and skin dive, and then bass fishing in Mexico, and then choose it in business too, and flying coast to coast. It all kind of went together. Well, I was born again when I was 13, but as I look back, I never grew a whole lot. And it was my own fault. There were strong Christians in the church, but I was always busy flying airplanes, fishing, uh, doing this, doing that. Not bad things, just busy. I was being groomed a mortgage banker. I was for all those years, and I never had in mind any change from that. I was a fairly happy camper. Life seemed to be good. But something happened in my life on March 15th of 1978. I lost an 18-year-old daughter. She was born on Guam, in fact. She had had seizures occasionally since she was 10 years old. She'd only have one about once a year. Now, of course, you knew that that wouldn't slow her down. She did everything she wanted to do, or was the captain of her drill team in her high school. She was majoring in ballet at the University of Oklahoma. And of course, Everett kept thinking that the medications was all that was going to take, and that she wouldn't have any more re reoccurrences at all. Uh, she um, went with a ski group, one of those bus deals from OU, and they skied all day, of course, and, and then uh, that night, my daughter's friend, when she was in the shower, that's the exact time that my daughter had a seizure and drowned in the jacuzzi. It was the most horrible phone call I've ever had in my life because it is the worst pain ever. And, and it just went from there and so, weeks and months of this agony, but this wonder I didn't get off on drugs or alcohol or something to give get relief. Nothing in my past was helping. So what'd you think of this, Lynn? Nice, very nice. Hold them all up there so we can see them. Ah, I think we'll eat fish tonight. A close friend of his, whom he'd known since the second grade, 
Dr. Lynn Myers, a pathologist from here in Oklahoma City, felt that he knew something that would offer him comfort. He uh, had started going to a full gospel church. We all know there's many that read the Bible and study it and discuss it, of course, but there's not really a lot of people that read the Bible and actually do the commands of Jesus. Well, this little church was doing them, and Lynn called one day and he said, I would like to send my pastors over to pray with you. I knew I needed something, so I said, yes, send them over. And I'll, I'll never forget the very first thing they said to me when they came in the door was this. What you need is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I remember saying to them, what's that? They opened the Bible and they showed me in John 14 where the Holy Spirit comes as a comforter. And they said, we would like to pray with you on this. We think this can help you. They went on and explained that it had to do with speaking in tongues. And I didn't know much about the tongues, but I, it sounded weird. But it didn't cost anything. And here my old friend sent these pastors over who I know is not a weirdo. I had to conclude if he, my friend thinks there's something to this that could help me, Maybe there is, he had called me about it. So I told him, okay, let's do this. They laid their hands on me. They started speaking in tongues and yes, I opened my mouth. I got some sounds coming out and it finally sounded like some words that I did not understand. But what was totally amazing and supernatural that very moment this devastating pain and agony that was right here in the middle of me that would not go away was suddenly pushed off to the side. And even after they left, I remember laying on the couch and just laid in that peace and comfort. I go into the mortgage office on that Monday and I surprised myself with a boldness to tell everybody about what went on. My friend, Dr. Myers, told me some more about his little church. They had a lot of hurting people coming over there with all kinds of problems, and they were having a supernatural level of a success. And then he added this, by the casting out of evil spirits. <laughs> I remember I said, whoa, Lynn, give me a break. This is a space age. Evil spirits hanging around today, come on. I had to see this to believe it. Well, he worked it out. And I was able to go over to that little church several different times where they did this kind of ministry. I'll never forget this one time. We all sat down there in the church office. This man came in, he's about 40 years old. The pastor quoted some scriptures, moved in the ministry, commanding these to come out as a possible spirit in Jesus' name over and over. Suddenly, I'm watching all this, suddenly this man's face kind of twisted. <laughs> and, and I thought that was odd because see, again, I'm thinking it's psychological. And then the next thing I see, this, this man's eyes are glaring. And then the voice that comes out of his mouth even sounds deeper and more gravelly lot. The pastor said, now, who is your master? And it answered right back, its master is Satan. That's when I decided, okay, if I'm in a spiritual war like this, maybe I'd better learn how to shoot. Over the following weeks, I went around to the bookstores here in Oklahoma City. I was really blown away because they had shelves and you know whole sections of books on how to cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. And I didn't even know this was going on. I had no idea the spirit world might be so big like this around us and doing things. So I'm sitting in watching more and more. And would you believe the day actually came when I felt comfortable in ministering to someone in deliverance myself. Now, who am I to do this? 
I'm a mortgage banker. I'm a pilot, commercial, instrument, single, multi-engine ratings, 5,000 pilot hours. I'm, I'm a skin diver and I'm a radio amateur. And so who am I? What are my credentials? Have you heard any? But if you know who you are in Jesus, you can blow them away. You know, I was initially doing all this myself, and I'm doing one almost every night. I realized I needed some help, and so I started sharing what I had learned in this with some other Christians that seemed to have an interest in this. That forgiving is a choice. It is a choice that the person can make at any time. Let's all admit it, these, this evil spirit thing sounds far out. It did to me, too. So in time, he learned more about the good news, and he found out that he would be leading people to a saving knowledge of Jesus. He began doing and teaching deliverance from evil spirits that oppress godly people. I'm like into the 19th year of full-time deliverance. We hang our hat at Deliverance Ministries on Luke 10, 19. We have power over all the enemy, and nothing will harm us. Would you call some of the things you marked on your list tormentors? Mm -hmm. The demons that torment there have legal rights to be there right now. You can pull the rug out from under them <laughs> and forgive yourself so we can cast them out. I've seen thousands of back seals now because of that. And so have the ministers all the time. I mean, the pain leaves. So I make this God-given choice so I can be free tonight and start living life abundant. You know, we do typically 15, uh, probably an average of 15 different cases every Monday night. So it's done behind me now just by word of mouth. We have them come from all over the country now. We take them through the steps and get them a Jesus overhaul. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. W5O, X and Chip. W5, Oscar, X-Ray, Juliet. There's an organization out of Colorado that has a radio station. I interview people, I schedule them to call in, and it gets all over Europe and into um, Africa and all. Pastor, we've got our first caller. Thank you for calling this evening. I first heard about uh, the Limit Ministries at a Christmas party. As soon as I walked in, it just felt like this is where I needed to be. When I left Deliverance that night, I didn't just ask for Jesus into my heart in the church and feel nothing. I literally felt the power of the Holy Spirit lift things up off of me. Everett has been living the greatest adventure of his life. I look back from where we are today, 40 years later, I never had any plans to do all this. <laughs> I've thought about in the past, every time I think about getting back into commercial loans, Something just sours in my stomach. <laughs> it just, it doesn't belong to me anymore. So I just tell my story and, <laughs> and at least uh, they can hear where I came from and maybe that'll soak in. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Everyone. 